Hi, this is Rad from MR Sports Cars. On this very cold winter and snowy day in Hertfordshire, um, I've got three beautiful examples of the Porsche 991 Gen 1. And they're all coupes, but I thought with all three of them being very different specifications, I would talk through their varying options and how things differ on these cars. Um, I know I've done this video a few times with different models, but I think it's it's a useful exercise because it shows you some of the sort of key options that most people look for. Some people might actually want to wait for the right car to turn up with the, with the set options that I can show you on these cars. Um, the, the, the big actual really nice difference with all three of these cars are, are two specific options. One is the sunroof option and one is the sound system option. So, on uh, first of all, let me introduce the cars. This is a 2014 um, 991 Gen 1 3.8 Carrera 4S Coupe. It's got the PDK box. This, all three have got the PDK box. Um, this is a 2011, it's, it's a 30th December, I believe, 2011 um, 991 Gen 1. So this would have been one of the first cars um, in the dealership to sell the idea of a 991 um, to customers. One of the first registered uh, sort of launch cars with a, a very good spec as well. Um, this is a 3.8 Carrera S. I'm not sure if I said that. So same engine across these two. This one's four wheel drive. This one's rear wheel drive. This one's wide body and this one's narrow body. So that's 4.4 centimeters wider at the back. And I'll show you the differences on how that looks at the back as a result of that. Um, and then the final one is a 2013, um, interesting, a 2014 model year car. So it was produced in July. So it's the same as a 24, early 2014 car. Um, it's a Carrera 4. So it's got the 3.4 liter flat six, not the 3.8 as in the other two, but with it being the Carrera 4, it's, it's four wheel drive as well and the wide body. Now the first option is the sunroof. So this car doesn't have the sunroof, so that's what the roof looks like without the sunroof. It has these little um, rubber gutters along the sides, um, but basically an unbroken metal panel at the top, no, no brakes in it at all. When I say brakes, I mean like uh, gaps, um, lines. This car, the 2014 Carrera 4S, has the um, electric metal sunroof. So this panel here opens up, and these panels here are fixed, but they are, as you can see, there's a, there's a break there, which is the same rubber that goes down the side on the other one, and then there's a break here as well. And these are painted typically in the body color so that's agate gray along the top there the pure white car um, on the end here the Carrera 4 has the other option which is the glass panoramic sunroof so this has a glass tinted top um, a piano black section here again with the same rubbers here and then there's a piano black bit there so that gives it a nice a, a very different look because it's it's uh a bit like a, a 997 Targa in that it has that contrasting colour. If it was specced in black, then you wouldn't really notice it because that's piano black and this would be obviously black pillars. But with it being a different colour, so say if it was the blue, guards red or something, they would always have that black section there. So it almost looks, I guess in some sports cars, you have the carbon roof. It kind of looks like that. So it's a broken uh, contrasting colour. Now, the, the way that these two operate is exactly the same. So... Um, they they tilt and slide so they all tilt open and they also also slide out and i'll show you that on both cars um, but this one also has an electric blind so you can sort of block out the light coming through the sunroof whereas this one obviously has always got the the sort of material section underneath so that's how they look now uh going back to the sort of fundamental differences so this is the narrow body so this is what the rear section looks like just there and then if you go to the wide body it's 4.4 centimeters wider so it's 2.2 centimeters wider out this way so the arches are more curved and it also has as you'll have spotted an LED tail light there so that's a, a light bar which uh, when you turn the side lights on or if you have the headlights on it's it's a constant red light 
Um, so it's not a brake light, it doesn't get brighter when you put the brakes on, it's only the sides and also the brake light here and also the one in the spoiler when that comes up that lights up for the brakes but that one is just constantly on which looks really nice and it's a, it's a design fixture that's been carried through to the newer cars 991 Gen 2s, 992s um, and it is actually a, a design feature from earlier cars as well so you've got the 993, the, 98, the 930 and earlier had that a red rear reflector and even these 997 gen 2s the wide body ones also have just a reflector so not it doesn't light up but it's a reflector here so that's a a nice carry carry over in design philosophy between the older cars and the newer cars um i really like the 4s's and the 4s for that design feature there the other fundamental difference that you'd normally see in in the the different models is the exhaust tailpipe so this is the 3.4 Carrera 4 as standard would have had oval exhaust pipes just an oval there oval there not the quad system this car was spec from the factory with the sports tailpipes uh, so not the sports exhaust but just the quad tailpipe finishes um, and they actually are exactly the same as the ones on the 3.8s um, so they're, they're the same style there the same style here and this one's got the switchable sports exhaust and it has the same tailpipe finishes as the other two so you can't necessarily tell first of all which model a car is based on the tailpipes or whether it has a sports exhaust or not you actually have to look it up and see whether it has the switchable sports exhaust button in the inside or if it is um, a car with the option for the optional sports tailpipes like this one is to make it look like um, an S or a 4S. Um, I think it just looks better with the, with the quad exhaust system. I don't know what your thoughts are on whether you prefer the, the oval on each side or the four, but I prefer the four myself uh, from a design standpoint. Um, then wheels wise, the Carreras came with 19 inch wheels as standard, but you could upgrade them to the, to the 20 inch wheels. And that one has been upgraded to 20 inch wheels from the factory. So that's the 20 inch Carrera classics and they're exactly the same as the 20 inch Carrera classics, which are diamond cut, agate gray interior um, on this agate gray car. Exactly the same wheels you could have across models. Um, as standard, the S models came with these, the Carrera S2, it might be Carrera S3, but they're 20 inch wheels. And I really like that style. We've just had these refurbished in a satin silver, which I think really makes them look really factory, so not too shiny. Um, and really see the blue, the sapphire blue paintwork on this car. Yeah, I love those. Uh, the brake setup is also different. So you've got smaller calipers at the front on the Carrera models. It doesn't mean that they're inferior stopping power. These have got plenty of stopping power for UK roads. Um, on a track day, you might notice more stopping power in those and they won't fade as quickly. But on the road, this is all you'll need and they're finished in us it's called like a satin black um those calipers there and then i'll show you the s ones on this car you can see they look quite a bit bigger and chunkier the discs themselves i believe are the same size it's down to the number of pistons i think there's six pistons there um in that caliper whereas in this one there's just four so there's two there and two on the inside as well so that makes a difference. All three cars are spec with the folding electric mirrors. So they fold, they can be programmed to fold when you lock it and that's what these ones have all been set to. And they also have the welcome LEDs there. If you have a car without the electric folding mirrors then they won't have the welcome LEDs underneath. So when you unlock it or lock it at night, it won't light up the sides like these do. But the front and rear lights will light up and stay lit up for a predetermined time that you set on the on the dashboard. Now, um, one of the other big options on the outside of these cars is um, the headlights. So two of these, uh, the pure white Carrera 4 and the Carrera 4S Agate Grey, they have the standard by Xenon headlights. So they're self-leveling and they're finished in a silver. These are the silver version of the PDLS headlights. So these ones actually rotate. Same by Xenon, same brightness, but the, the top bezel rotates around corners and it's speed dependent. So it'll basically light up as you go around corners. I really like that system. It works really well um, on windy roads. 
And I guess the only way you can sort there's a very subtle difference between these two when they're specced in both silver. The 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 plastic here, um, I'm not sure if it's visible. This plastic around here um, is a darker grey. It's not black. It's like a, a dark, um, yeah, metallic grey. And also the edge of the of the actual light itself is is a black piano black, whereas here it's silver. And this is a much brighter silver et, um, internal plastic casing there. So that's the only way you can tell looking at it. But obviously, if you have the spec list, then you can see um, that. This car also has, and this is why I actually bought it specifically, not just because of the colour and the other options, but it has what's called the M030 sport chassis. So it's got uh, slightly short, shorter dampers, thicker anti-roll bars. It's it sits 10 mil lower than a car with PASM. So um, the other two have PASM, so they're 10 mil higher. If a car didn't have PASM, it would be a further 10 mil again. So this car is 20 mil lower than a car without PASM. So a Carrera without PASM um, would be quite a bit higher than this car. Um, it has a different front lip and the spoiler at the back also goes up to a, a higher level as well. Um, so let me just show you that actually. So I've got all three keys here. Um, you could also, and you can on eBay as well, uh, eBay, Amazon, you can get these cases in different colours. So I've got them here. Um, that's just the standard black, satin black, plastic one for the aggregate grey. And then obviously the sapphire blue one has that one. And then the pure white one has that one there. So I'll just show you the two uh, spoilers. And the mirrors fold out. That's how high it goes up as standard. And I'll do it on this one. They also say say the different model on the stereo, at least they said, and also on this little display here so that should go up a higher level so you can see that angle there and compare it to this one there um, so it's got greater aerodynamic impact that that front lower splitter and that rear um, spoiler goes up at a high level which makes it more sporty um, at high, more stable at higher speeds. Um, I will just grab the other key and I'll show you how these roofs. So this one hasn't got the blind on it at the moment. It's quite dark in here because um, the snow has actually packed out my sort of like clear sections in the roof. Um, but you can see it does let in some light there. You can also have the blind, which basically makes it look a lot like the, the one without the sunroof. So it, Alcantara and then this is like a material here So there's the tilt option Again that works really well on the motorway just to let a bit of air through the car and then this is the full sunroof open And it has a little wind deflector here, which sort of springs up, got a cloth here. Always clean this, or they typically have a lot of flies in them because people don't think to clean them. They don't open the sunroof when they clean the car, but um, you, you just need a damp cloth just to wipe that over. And then here is the final key for the agate gray one. There's some other nice options on, on these cars, which I will talk through as well, if you've noticed stuff. So here it's got different, it's just got close, um, tilt. So that's it tilted and then fully open because it doesn't need a separate, separate button for a blind because it doesn't have a blind. So that's that one open as well. Now on the outside as well, you may have spotted 
this car has what's called the um, aluminium um, window surround. As standard, they come in like a, a rubberized plastic around there, so it doesn't make a design feature of them. Whereas this one was spec from the factory with that. I haven't seen many cars with that. I don't know if you have. Um, I quite like it. I think it makes this car look particularly elegant. Also, you could spec the car to not have the full model designation and just 911. That's actually, that is code 911 to have that on a car. You can, of course, order it afterwards, but this car was spec'd with it because the P was 3 tells us it was spec'd with uh, 911 instead of the uh, Carrera 4S. Um, it's also spec with the rear wiper, whereas the other two, uh, no, this, this one doesn't have rear wiper, but this one does as well, just there. So it would have, oh, this one's also been spec with 911, whereas this one's got the full designation here, 911 S. The others would have had a 911 Carrera 4, um, and this agate gray one would have had 911 Carrera 4 S. Uh, which looks quite busy. I, I don't know. I, I like it both ways. Um, all three have got um, park assist front and rear. So they've got parking sensor at the front, parking sensor at the back. Um, they all have headlamp washers as well. And then on the outside, what else was I going to mention? Um, so the wide body cars have, it's more obvious on this car, have a lower plastic edge which flares out at the back. Um, so that denotes the four-wheel drive cars. The two-wheel drive cars don't have that at all. So it's just the galvanized sort of like textured lower sill there. And then a small rubber end piece there. So that's another way to tell whether it's a four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive. Um, that could be spec from the factory painted in body color. I've had a few that have had it body painted as could this front lower spoiler that could have been body painted as well but it is quite low so it can catch things so it's probably best to leave it in that sort of satin plastic to match the grills at the front there the, that protect the air uh, conditioning condensers so that's a lot of the options on the outside um, now the big one I wanted to talk about um, which I'm not actually gonna it, it's quite hard to um, talk about audio on a video like this with a crappy microphone on a camera, but this car has what's called the basic sound system in the UK. This was the, the lowest option I believe you could get on Carreras, which is the Sound Package Plus, which is a nine speaker amplified. So it's got a separate amplifier from the head unit. It's got nine speakers and it's 235 watts. Um, that's the lowest spec system you can get and it does have all of the controls for Bose, treble, fader, balance and it does actually sound very very good. Um, I, I've never felt it feels like it's underpowered in any way but the, the sound on this is perfectly decent for listening to the radio or listening to a CD or listening to a podcast or something. It doesn't rattle the, the whole interior or anything like that. It doesn't go beyond when you turn it when you turn it up it doesn't go beyond um, its own range. This car's got the next option um, and it's denoted by these small little um, labels here on the speakers on both sides. So it's just there. So exactly the same place at Bose. So this Bose system has been sort of running through with Porsche since um, I would say the 996 era. So um, it would have come out 98, 99, um, just off the top of my head. Um, and they've obviously developed it over the years, but Bose was seen as the premium sound system, especially in the UK for these Porsche models. And this is a 12 speaker system. So it has three additional speakers and sounds package plus. And in this particular, in these particular cars, it's 445 watts. And again, it's a separate amplifier, but it also has a subwoofer in these cars. So that's the next model up. And to, to be honest with you, most of the cars that we spec have Bose. Um, a few have Sound Package Plus. And then this one is one which, this system I've, I've never had before and I deliberately got this car, not only because of the high spec, because it had this stereo as well. And it's called the Burmester, which is in the options. I think it just says um, top, uh, high premium top system or something like that. 
um, on P with three. Um, but it's denoted here, Burmester. It's got different grills there to sort of highlight that. Now this system is, again, amplified. 12 speakers just like Bose, but it's got 821 watts of power, which in aftermarket stereo context is not very high, but in a, a four-seater sports car, I think that's pretty decent. And actually, when you turn this one up, it just it does really make a huge difference to how it sounds. Um, and again, it doesn't rattle the car. It's It's got a beautiful range of... Uh, dynamic range in the audio but again as i said i'm not an audiophile but i can tell the difference between this one and the bose um sound package plus as i said is perfectly decent but that one does feel like it's a step ahead in terms of how it produces bass this one just the range throughout the range it just sounds crisper um i don't know if you've had experience with the different stereos if you do please do comment below on on what you think of the different stereo options um i would find sound package plus perfectly livable myself but each to their own i just this car is basically a very very high spec car so it has obviously switchable suspension which comes on all s models so 4s 2s all have the switchable suspension it was specced on the carrera 4 as well as an added option that someone paid extra for has the switchable sports exhaust which is just there they all have heated seats um so there's a three-stage system there and this has the um 14 way um fully electric uh, seats so they have a lumbar support system here they have a knee support which goes in and out there and um, it has embossed headrest which is a separate option there illuminated door sills which i think look great um tire pressure monitoring as well so this car has tire pressure monitoring which you can see on that screen there um it, with all the four-wheel drives have this extra display to show you the split from front to rear of torque as it's being distributed as you're driving. Um, Sport Chrono Package Plus comes with this extra screen and also the G4 screen. So there's some really nice options there. There's that illuminated door sill. Folding electric mirrors have this extra section there. Um, just trying to think okay yeah also the sport design steering wheel this is a great steering wheel with the pdk system it lights up on the sides uh launch control sport and sport plus and um it's a great i i think i love the the thickness of that rim and also the the size of the paddles to shift the gears whereas if you go to this car this has the what's called the multifunction steering wheel which is the other high ends um Steering wheel, which has the buttons for the PCM, which obviously the sport design one doesn't. Um, it has the, but it has the controls for the phone um, as well as audio, but it doesn't have those full size paddles. So it has these rocker switches. So on both sides, you can go up and down a gear just with one, one hand, which is quite nice as well. This is good for longer distance journeys. The other one's better on a windy B road, I find. All the cars come with um, auto lights, whether they're PDLS or by Xenon. And typically they will come with this door entry guard, which is just a, a stainless steel insert with a plastic um, there, which is different to those ones there, which are illuminated. And here is the Carrera 4 ones. Again, just that stainless steel. Uh, this, car, this car has the same seats as the Agua Grey one as well so this is very very high spec i'd say the only thing that isn't um on this car which some people don't mind actually is the switchable sports exhaust but that can always be retrofitted um this one also has cruise control which is that extra stalk there um i don't think this car has cruise control no it doesn't because there's no stalk on that side um, and this car does have cruise control. There's cruise control. Um, let me just light up that rear bar so you can see what I'm talking about. So that lights up really well there. 
lovely to follow one of these at night with that red strip, I think. Um, and now Audis have actually copied that sort of strip across the back. Other manufacturers are also following suit. Um, but I, th I think Porsche were one of the first to light up that bar. Um, so that is, I think, most of the most of the options. There was, oh, let me shut that sunroof, actually. So that's how it shuts. You can see it sort of fold down that front section. So there we go. And then when you lock it, they should fold. Um, you can actually disable that through the PCM. Um, this car, as I said, has got the sports spasm, so it does sit 10 mil lower. It does look 10 mil lower to me. I don't know whether it's coming through on the video or not, but um, it's 10 mil lower. This car, interestingly, so all three cars come with um, Isofix at the back. This car also has those hoops spec here so you can just see them under there for the passenger seat um so if you if you want a child seat in the front then you need to get one with that option um on it the other two don't have it but they will both have this mechanism at the back on both sides um they're the four-way electric seats so they're the standard sport seats so um the base is still electric to move up and down, but it only moves in one orientation, whereas the full electric ones, the base, the front of the base can be lifted and the rear of the base can be lifted independently to change the angle. This one, it sort of moves up in an arc. The back's electric and then the to move the whole seat back and forward is manual. Still very comfortable seats, but I just thought I should mention that that is the difference between those four-way seats and the 14-way seats. Just close the sunroof on this one. Obviously they all have the extended black leather, um, which actually in the UK, as far as I know, um, they also actually have um, the 14 way seats also come with memory. So you, you can, each key will have its own memory for the driver's seat, the electric steering column, the position of the steering wheel, and the mirror angles on both sides. Um, you can also have an additional two settings, and it also has the option to what you saw there was the seat move back and the steering wheel will lift up for comfort entry and exit to make it a bit easier to get in and out. It moves the seat back, moves the steering wheel out of the way. And when you put the key in, you start the ignition, it will move everything to where you last set it on the key, which I think is a really lovely feature. So there's those mirrors going up. I've still got a key in there. Um, performance wise, there's not a huge difference. So, um, and weight-wise, there's not a huge difference. There's something like 50 or 60 kilos between um, this car here and this car here, this being the four-wheel drive, this being the two-wheel drive. Um, 0 to 60, the slowest is this one. The 0 to 60, I think, is 4.2 um, with the Sport Chrono Package Plus uh, PDK 3.4, which is 350 horsepower. These are both 400 horsepower. And these two should do 60 in under four seconds, so 3.9-ish. This will probably be slightly quicker because it's ever so slightly lighter, um, I guess, depending on road conditions, because this has got, obviously, power going to the front wheels on demand. So up to 40% uh, of torque is directed to the front wheels on the four-wheel drive cars, um, and a minimum of 5% of torque. So these cars do feel a little bit more sure-footed um, when the roads are a bit slippier, but these obviously feel um, a bit more lively. Not in a dangerous way, but these you do feel the tail a bit more on these. 
um, but both make fantastic sports cars. Don't feel that this uh, a four-wheel drive will make will understeer massively three corners or anything of like that. It's really not that kind of system. It really does feel um, dynamically motivated, is what I would say. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video talking through these three cars. The white one's already sold and that's off to, I'm actually delivering it north of Perth in Scotland um, in a couple of days time, just before Christmas for the new owners. They're absolutely thrilled and super excited to get that car. These two are, are currently available at the time of filming, but obviously when I produce, when I publish this video, they may well be gone. Um, but it was just a fantastic opportunity to, to show you three very lovely 991s, but spec'd very, very differently. Um, and how they are different physically and also how their systems perform differently as well. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions about options, particularly 991s, 997 Gen 2s, 981s, 987 Gen 2s, please don't hesitate to comment below. Um, please do subscribe to my channel or like this video. Thank you for watching.